coming up to the to the the yearly uh, event of the the IMC Sabbath special event each year that we have, can you tell me a little bit more about the IMC? The International Women's Steel Congress was started quite a few decades ago as a forum for the international ministry of the Church of God Seventh Day. Uh, we discovered through the Bible Advocate other mechanisms mm. that that the body of Christ in our community was growing. It be, the Church of God Seventh Day began in North America and Canada, and began to get a lot of requests in the 1930s, 40s and 50s. And so but by the time we got to the 1970s, we recognised we needed some sort of forum to be able to create or maintain doctrinal unity, mm -hmm. to be able to create a forum also for fellowship among pastors. Because we, this, you know, we had a lot of church communities in very isolated parts of the world saying, look, we, we read the same scriptures as you do and, mm. and we're looking for a church that matches up with what we read in scripture. And so then the International Ministerial Congress came into, f and Australia was one of the founding, um, one of the founding um, members of the International Ministerial Congress in the 1970s sometime. And so the mandate of the IMC has grown since then to not only just be for doctrinal unity and for fraternity and fellowship among mm. pastors and leaders in the church, but also produces a environment for collaboration, for sharing the work of evangelism, of supporting various ministries around the world. And we've been involved in producing material that local churches can use both by way of constitutions, policies, guidelines, um, assisting in various types of ministries like orphans ministry, projects. Um, so we've certainly grown from the 1970s to recognise that we're no longer just a, um, a ministerial organisation, we've taken on a whole lot more that ministers in the lives of the Church of God Seventh Day around the world. Mm. Right. It, it's, um, it's interesting because it, it's helped us to be united and, mm. and it's bridging those gaps of the greater community um, into, into something, something bigger. And well, we come from all different cultures, different mm. languages, different ethnicities. But you read the Word of God, and as God's Spirit draws people, you, you think, man, there must be some other people around the world who, who understand these yeah. scriptures the way I'm currently reading them. And so the church has grown really organically. Now, the Bible Advocate in the United States has played a significant role. So you'll have small groups of believers mm. reading a magazine and going, wow, let me ch compare and look at those scriptures. And so then they, there's an affinity. And we have, at the moment, the International Ministerial Congress has 44 members. Okay. But we have about nine or ten other other conferences or countries saying, look, we'd like to be a part yeah, of the International probably. Ministerial Congress. Mm. And so in 2020, when we meet again, this time in Nigeria, um, you know, we'll be looking for provisional membership and have a conversation because sometimes you find differences. You find differences within Sabbatarian communities where, where are they a big issue or are they a peripheral issue? Mm. But the sense of fraternity and fellowship within the IMC is growing and it's very exciting to be a part of that. Mm. So speaking of you know, being a part of it, how do you fit in? Uh, what's your role in the IMC? I, um, many years ago, I was part of another Sabbatarian church and I started looking back into our history and I'd heard about the Church of God Seventh Day and so I, um, so I came to, the, I think it was 2007, I went to Kansas mm. where they had the United States Canada General Conference mm. and followed on from that was the International Men of Steel Congress and so I put my hand up and said, look, I'd, I'd like to come as an observer, mm. which is very interesting to come and understand, you know, this, this part of the body of Christ that I really didn't know much about. And I found the right hand of fellowship, which I'd never experienced before. It was a warmth, a love, mm -hmm. and they referred to me as their brother, and there was no trying to sort of prove my past in, the, in Christ or anything. It was yeah. just family. And I think Rebecca later on experienced the same as well. And so I came along as an observer, and I was very impressed to see the polity of working together across different understandings and different cultures and and the language challenge and uh, and where every you know you bring with you your cultural and, and societal biases and to see it working in the body of christ i was very impressed and um so i attended again in london in, in 2012 and um and again in 2016 in argentina mm. and um i was given the opportunity would you like to nominate as secretary of the International Ministerial Congress, and I said, well, I'm happy to, you know. I've had 10 years of board service here in Western Australia mm. on various local non-for-profit organisations. And so it's been an opportunity to serve and to prepare the role for the next secretary who will take on after I'm, I step down. The, the interesting thing it is, it's it given a beautiful insight into the dynamics of 
mm. of the Church of God's Seventh Day, not no longer as an observer looking from the outside, but sharing on the exec executive and seeing the love of Christ in people's lives and that Christ-centeredness that moves us together in unity. Without that, there's a disparity and a brokenness that we reflect on society. And so it's been a real honour to be able to serve in the leadership at this time um, at a very crit critical time, Joshua, mm. because we see the church has grown around the world, but there's never been a Church of God Seventh-day international body. The ministerial, um, International Ministerial Congress has sort of facilitated it, that. Mm -hmm. But while there's Churches of God Seventh-day in the very countries, there's not a unifying Church of God Seventh-day international. Mm. And so we've been working, a little bit of work in the background to present at the Congress in, in Nigeria next year a plan for an international federation of the Church of God Seventh Day, which will bring us great opportunity and mandate to work collectively, to have stronger communication, and to be able to work stronger in evangelism. And so it's a very exciting time that we're at within the International Ministerial Congress. Hmm. Well, when Christ says, you know, he will build his church, it's not churches, it's, it's one church, and then, so working in that, that's right. Um, and That's right. All and it's, it's understanding that we are a part of the body of Christ. You have what we understand as best we can explain it, mm. the visible church yeah. and the invisible church. And sometimes you might meet somebody who goes to another church, but you think, wow, they are filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's the fellowship. So the International Ministerial Congress, that's where I appreciate the right hand of fellowship because it gives us as a body that we work together to extend the right hand of fellowship to others and recognize what God is doing among us. And it's bigger than we can imagine. Sometimes yeah. like the disciples in the first century looked at their small patch and said, Jesus, stop those other people. <laughs> and he said, if they're, not against, if, if, they're, if they're not against us, they're for us kind of thing, you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so it's very exciting to have that bigger view. And it's very hard because we live with a small view set. You know, sometimes yeah. we, we can be very myopic. I, things for me many years ago was very black and white. And by right. God's grace, we are where we are today and continuing growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord mm. and Saviour, Jesus. And God equips us in that, doesn't he, to help us fulfill that ministry? Um, oh, he does, ministry. without the Holy Spirit. We, are, we have a 10-point statement within the International Ministerial Congress. <coughs> the first one is being Christ-centered, and the mm. second one is being Spirit-formed. You know, Jesus said, I will send another counselor, and he sends the Holy Spirit. We are formed by that Spirit, so that we have the very personal presence of God in us. Jesus says, I will be in you and you with me. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And that, oh, damn, that's the dynamic that binds us together mm. and binds us together very powerfully because we do live in challenging times and we need to be connected together in order to face the, the journey that Christ has for us. Mm. So with your work in IMC, you know, uh, mostly through your term, might be re-elected, not sure what the future holds. Mm. But how, how has, you know, where you've been really helped you to step into this role and hopefully... Um, to build a way, pave the way, and, and you know, if it is to, to pass on the baton to the, to the next um, server. I, you have course. it in your heart, Joshua, sometimes that, mm -hmm. you know, a calledness to God. And you don't know, even as a youth, I wrestle in my mind, you know, I, I, I understood God existed and I understood so much about discipleship. But I basically, in the early part of my life, just warmed a, a seat in church mm. and lived a fairly disempowered journey. It was probably in my mid-30s that I read a book on discipleship and the, the, the premise of the book was Jesus hasn't called you just to be saved or to go through the process of salvation. Mm -hmm. He's called you to feed my sheep, to step up into discipleship and suddenly I, I had an epiphany. Now that's only because of God's Spirit. It wasn't because I have any high intellect. No. Yes. <laughs> and so that, from that moment onwards I was personally challenged and when you're personally challenged, you can look at regret on the past and think, ah, oh, that's the status quo, so what? No. By God's Spirit, you're counseled to grow in the image and statue of Christ. Because once you recognize what, the, one of the things about the first century disciples, apostles, they were prepared to love so much to the point of sacrifice. They loved the Lord so much. Hmm. I never thought like that. I was happy to, to fly under the radar mm. and look after self and, you know, and... Um, and within the International Ministerial Congress, this stepping up to service is really, it is service. It's, it's doing your absolute best with all the resources that God has given you to work and collaborate together and, and have, still have, hold that calledness, but don't try to preempt what God is doing. You know, I'm happy mm -hmm. to step off. 
providing I've done my job. Yeah. And one of the challenges we face in the world today in leadership, leadership is about empowering others to growth. You look at politicians and world leaders, how difficult it is for them to step off the platform. And one of the things mm. is John the Baptist understood something. He said of Jesus, he must increase and I must decrease. But even John the Baptist struggled with that because then he engages Herod at a particular level that cost him his life. Mm. And that the preeminence of Christ is sovereign. You know, every time mm. I share a message, either through video or, or sermon, mm. my goal in my heart is that those who are listening by the Holy Spirit are connected to the Lord all the much more. And I've just simply been the vehicle. And um, if we keep that in mind, then we'll remember Jesus' words where he said, you know, call no man rabbi, for you are all brothers mm. and you have one teacher, the Christ. That's very humbling. We're all brothers. You know, no matter where we've come from, no matter <coughs> what our education is, um, one Lord, one faith, one spirit, and being formed in the image of mm. Jesus Christ. Well, thank you for your time, John. It's been a, a pleasure to chat and I uh, look forward as the as kingdom grows within us and our community to see the, the good work that God's doing. To him be the glory and that's the, really the bottom line. And if we can encourage others to look upward, outward and give him the thanks, that's what it's all about. So it's been really good. That's thank good. you, Joshua. No thank you.